Hi, and welcome to another Portworx Lightboard session. My name is Ryan Walner, and I work here in the Cloud Native Business Unit at Pure Storage. Today, we're going to be briefly talking about what Portworx with existing flash arrays would look like um, and how you can configure them and what benefit you really get out of them. So if you already have a flash array in your data center, you may be wanting to use Kubernetes, you may be wanting to use Portworx on Kubernetes. Well, the good news is that you can use these technologies together and there are some really great benefits to it. So Portworx um, deploys onto Kubernetes, as we know. These are our three worker nodes. Um, what you need to do first to actually get things working together is create a JSON file, which gives the um, sort of IP and API token um, information uh, for your flash arrays or flash blades work very similar, but we're focusing on the flash array. So once you have this JSON file, it's applied to your Kubernetes cluster as a secret in the kube system namespace. That sets up the um, availability of your pure equipment for Kubernetes. When Portworx is installed, which it's installed as a Portworx on Kubernetes application, just as a daemon set or an operator, Portworx will ins get installed and find this secret. And it'll say, oh, I have a flash array at my um, environment and I'm going to use that to uh, configure myself. So what that winds up doing is, what it does is it allows pure storage flash array to actually provision volumes, MUNs from itself and attach it to these Portworx nodes as brand new hosts in that flash array. And all of that happens automatically. So Pure and Portworx work together to talk to each other to create the hosts, create the LUNs, uh, attach them, and make them avail available for Portworx. After that, these LUNs are now part of a Portworx storage pool that is now globally available to all of your containers. So this storage pool becomes available and you can create Portworx virtual volumes as you normally would for any other container. So you may have a database container here um, and you carve out a uh, Portworx volume. It may have replication factors of three and IO profiles of a DB remote and all the normal parameters that you would give to your Portworx volumes in any other Kubernetes environment. The difference is your backing storage is now Flash Array. Now, you may be asking, why would I do this? What are the benefits of this? So Flash Array has some really good um, data reduction capabilities. And with Portworx on top of Kubernetes, using Flash Array, um, these replication factors, like three, um, make three whole copies of the data. So we may have one copy on this node, one copy on this node, and one copy on this node. This makes the data very high available, highly available for failover. Uh, so if a Portworx node goes down, then these nodes will be able to use the replica locally. The benefit here is that um, using the data reduction capabilities, these replicas ultimately become one if they're exactly the same. So we see sort of uh, a, rep a data reduction capability of three to one automatically with a single volume and a replication factor of three. Now, if we scale this container out by say three more and each one of these then uses a whole nother volume and each one uses a replication factor of three, we can see these uh, DRRs go all the way up to somewhere around nine to one. And so this is one of the really great benefits of using Flash Array and the features underneath it in combination with the container granularity of Portworx on Kubernetes. So I hope this was useful. Let's jump into the lab and really check this out in action. Let's go. The first thing you're going to need is a pure JSON file, 
which points to your flash arrays, management endpoints, and contains the API tokens needed to access those clusters. Once you have this file, it needs to be uploaded into the Cube system namespace in order for Portworks to be aware of it. Next, we're going to take a look at the volumes within our flash array, showing that no existing PX cloud volumes are found. This is to show you that Portworks is in fact provisioning these automatically when installed. Next, we go ahead and install Portworks as you normally would, but with the pure provisioner secret in the Cube system namespace. Portworks finds this secret and tells itself that it's using a flash array environment. This is where the magic happens. Portworks goes ahead and talks to the flash array, creates the needed hosts and connectivity between the worker nodes and the flash array, goes ahead and creates those PX cloud drive LUNs and attaches them to the worker nodes. This will then create a globally accessible storage pool for your containers. Here we can see the PX Cloud Drive automatically getting created for the both metadata and data aspects of Portworks. We're now ready to go. We can check our Portworks cluster by going into one of our nodes and issuing the pixie cuddle status command. Here we can see Portworks is operational and in fact using our flash array LUNs underneath. At this point, we're ready to provision an application. So what do we need to do this? Well. The Portworx storage class has a number of different features that are now all available for you at a container granular level on top of FlashArray. IO profiles, replication, labels, schedule policies for local or cloud, uh, snapshots, all at the fingertips of a storage class and provisioned by Kubernetes. Once this storage class exists, we go ahead and create it and then we provision an application. In this case, we're provisioning Postgres. Here we can see our bound volume, which is a virtual volume on top of our flash array environment. Postgres is up and running, so now we can use it. One last thing we want to show is let's dive into our Postgres container and run some benchmark tests. Let's create a database for this benchmark and run the test and let the data flow between the Portworx virtual volume all the way down to the flash array. What we're really showing here is that uh, we're taking advantage of the flash arrays data reduction capabilities. And in this case, we can see that our data reduction is seen anywhere from three to one all the way to nine to one for metadata and data. This can be vastly improved if you use multiple replicas in a container as well. Thank you and until next time, take care.